Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to this afternoon's uh, webinar introducing you to the Department of Transport's new tool for authorities, the Analyze Bus Open Data Service. Um, you've probably come across the Bus Open Data Service um, for timetables and live data and fares before uh, but uh, the department's just uh, in the process of releasing the Analyze service. And so we're running a series of events uh, on behalf of the Department of Transport with ETO World to uh, introduce the service to you, help you get up and running and understand what you can do with it. Um, this is being recorded um, and will be made available afterwards those of you that registered will um, receive an email with links to it later um, and you can then share that with uh, colleagues who uh, were unable to make it. Um, if you've got any questions, then uh, please do feel free to ask them. If you can please use the chat function that we've got um, and feel free to um, put things in that chat as, as we go along, as, as questions come to you. Um, there are a number of uh, ETO people on the call um, who will um, perhaps be able to answer them as we go along and if not, um, we'll pick them up uh, towards the end um, and if they're particularly nutty, we might need to get back to you, um, but uh, we will uh, answer you in some way. Um, so, um, for those of you that haven't come across Artig before, um, Artig um, is a membership body for public transport technology stakeholders, so local authorities, bus operators, suppliers and consultants, and we focus on how you can make best use of technology to improve the public transport experience, particularly in terms of information, either um, for internal management or for customers. Um, and we develop standards and best practice uh, guidance around um, transport technology um, and represent the UK uh, at a European level on standards bodies um, and do a lot of work with, uh, with the Department of Transport. Um, so that's a brief introduction to ARTIG. Um, because um, there's a lot of information um, and a lot of uh, functionality in, in Analyze. Um, we're going to jump um, straight into um, introducing you to the Analyze Bus Open Data Service. Um, and for this bit, I'm going to hand over to um, Dan Jones from ETO World, who's going to um, go through um, the service with you and introduce it to you. So uh, welcome, Dan. Afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining. And thanks, Tim, for that intro. Um, I'll just share my screen. Cool. Yeah. Um, so today we'll go through an introduction to analyze bus open data, um, the service that Tim just gave a brief intro to. Um, before we get into that, I'd just like to introduce um, some people on the call, as, as Tim mentioned, um, and ETO World itself. So. Um, ETO World is the Department of Transport's technical partner, so we help with building the Bus Open Data Service and also the Analyze Bus Open Data Service that, that you're going to see today. Um, I'm Dan Jones. I'm a product manager at ETO World, so I, I sort of help build out this tool with, with the team back at ETO and make sure that um, the things that you as the authorities need to do um, are enabled within the tool. Um, Patrick. Do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, thanks, Dan. Hi, all. Um, so, yeah, my name is Patrick. I've been working with Ito for about a year and a half now, but very recently uh, joined Dan, Amy, and the ABOD team uh, very recently. Uh, so, I'll be helping with any kind of user specific queries that come through, as well as some uh, internal items that we that we find worth investigating. So um, yeah, if if there's uh, any any questions that come through in the chat, I'll uh, help out with answering any of those 
and if there's any kind of individual user specific questions i'll i'll do my best answering those as well but if not they'll get catalogued and answered at a later date so um yeah i hope you enjoy the session i'll pass it on to amy thanks dan thanks patrick yeah hi everybody i'm amy bridge i'm a project manager at ito world and i work across the bus uh, open data program um, at ito world so i work both on the bus open data service um, and analyze bus open data Thank you, Patrick and Amy. Um, so quickly, just to cover what um, we're going to talk about in today's webinar, um, we want to give you a quick background to the Bus Open Data Service itself and, and how this fits in with the Analyzed Bus Open Data Service. Um, we'll give you an introduction to the Analyzed Bus Open Data Service. Um, we'll give you a very quick demo of the functionality available, um, and then we will answer any questions that you have. Um, as uh, everyone has said, please post the questions in the chat as we go along and we'll try and um, either answer them or get to them at the end. Um, we've also had a few questions come in beforehand if you filled out the form that we sent round, so we'll try and cover some of those as well. Um, just before I move on, there are later webinars as mentioned and, and they will be designed to talk more in depth about things like the on-time performance section in the tool and future releases that we have coming up. Um, and this webinar is, is designed as an introduction to the service. Um, so very quickly, the Bus Open Data Service, um, which we call BODS, um, this is a commitment to open up bus data from 2020, includes all local bus services in England. Um, bus operators can provide their data via the published service, and then data consumers can pick this up via the API and the find bus data service, um, which I hope most people are aware of by now. Um, just a brief history in in sort of 2018 we began the kind of alpha service which was just the time uh, providing the timetables data um we then moved on to the phase one of the beta service um which is essentially where we enabled um operators to provide the timetables to data consumers um, and also receive data quality reports back for any improvements they could make um, on their timetables um and then the current phase that we're in is sort of beta phase two so this is the kind of fully fledged service where you can also provide fares and ticketing data on there and um, more relevant to this discussion the automatic vehicle location information in real time um, and last but not least on that um, thing on the right is punctuality so this is where um, where it's relevant to the discussion today um, so that's kind of a very brief history and intro to VODs and, and where we've got up to so far um, so just to talk a little bit more about BODS and how Analyzed Bus Open Data fits into it. Um, so we have the published service, as I mentioned, that allows operators to provide schedules um, in trans exchange format, uh, vehicle location information in Siri VM format, format and fares in NetX format. Um, we also have the Find Bus Open Data service, um, which allows consumers to get that data in raw format. Um, it also now allows for uh, consumers to get uh, GTFS data and GTFS RT data um, for vehicle positions. And you can also um, query this data via an API or just kind of bulk download it all in one go. Um, so the next part that we have sort of worked on is what we can do to take in this um, data, uh, the real time and the more static data into a model. Um, this obviously involves um, attempting to match the real time data to the timetables data, which kind of all happens in this uh, box in the middle of the screen. Um, and then we continuously archive this data down. Um, so that kind of continuously happens every minute of every day that we're receiving that information. Um, and that enables us to build the analyzed bus open data on top of that archive. Um, so there's a number of different kind of bits of functionality within our analyzed bus open data, such as the feed monitoring. Um, you're able to kind of subscribe to alerts, um, schedule adherence, and, and general reporting and analytics. And that's what the focus of the session today is. Um, so, what are the aims of analyzed bus open data? Um, so, it's part of the DFT's ongoing investment in bus services. Um, designed to eventually support the, the recently announced national bus strategy. Um, so that includes enhanced partnerships and, and bus service improvement plans. Um, 
and it's going to help um, governments, local authorities, and bus operators to um, perform existing analysis, but in faster, hopefully faster and easier ways, um, produce more accurate and detailed um, reports, um, improve collaboration between different organisations. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about who has access to this, but essentially everyone has access to the same view of the data. So um, it will enable collaboration between those different organisations so you can see it. Um, eventually, as we release more and more features, we hope that we can help to identify network improvement opportunities um, and then feed that back into potentially informed transport policy um, and compliance monitoring across the industry. Um, so some more background about um, the service. So the four main user groups that we've built this for um, our operators, uh, local authorities like yourself, Department for Transport, and then the regulators, DVSA and, o and OTC. Um, it's important to note that all users have access only to national operator codes that are relevant to them. Um, so when, when we invite organisations to the service, we make sure you're set up with the relevant national operator codes. And, and so um, not everyone has the same access to all of the data. Obviously, DFT and DVSA will be able to see most things, um, but as a local authority, you'd, you'd only be able to see the operators that operate in your area. Um, it's based upon only the open data that's provided to the bus open data service. Um, so it's, it's not really taking in any other data apart from one exception, which I'll um, mention later on. Um, it provides relevant, free and consistent analysis to all of the different user groups. Um, and it's intended to provide equitable access to these sorts of analytics tools. So some organisations, especially smaller ones, may not have had such tools historically. Um, so this, this is hopefully um, will allow the playing field to be levelled a little bit and, and give everyone access to these tools that they may not have had before. Um, I'll just quickly go through the requirements um, to obtain analysis within the tool. Um, so there's kind of three elements to this. The first is obviously the network um, itself. So that's the sort of relationship and pass between stations and stops. The service itself takes care of this. So there's no action on, on your part or the operator's part to get that into the service. Um, more importantly, the scheduled data needs to be provided within BOD. So this is the, the trans exchange data that operators can publish onto BODs. Um, and that sort of tells them what is supposed to be happening. Um, and then we also have the real time data. So this is the operator's vehicle location feeds from BODs. So this is telling us for every single vehicle, um, hopefully um, every 30 seconds, what is actually happening. Um, so on the part of the operators, we need those two key pieces of information, um, what is supposed to happen by the schedules and, and what's actually happening now. Um, and that enables us to match these things and then archive it down and build the service back on top of that. Um, just to go into a little bit more detail about the real-time data, um, in order to for us to kind of match the real-time data to the, to the scheduled data, the, the real-time feeds need to include some information to help us with that. So what we need is a correct national operator code, so and, and that needs to match what's what's provided in the timetables. Um, we need reference to timetables journey codes. So uh, this could, as an example, be a vehicle journey code in the, in the real time feed, or, or the kind of ticket machine um, extensions in the real time feed. Um, we need frequent updates. Um, so uh, we want it to be the the GPS updates on the vehicles to be provided at least every thirty seconds. Um, the more frequent they are, um, the, the more accurate we can make the analysis. Um, obviously, we need accurate vehicle positions to determine when a vehicle is actually uh, so, sorry, departing from the stop. Um, and in general, the more information in these feeds, the better. So if we have things like the line name, the origin, the destination, and so on, um, if there are any times in which we aren't provided some of this information above, we can kind of help make a best guess to as to what that vehicle is meant to be doing. Um, we then have the scheduled data. So similarly, we need the national operator code in this. Um, and very broadly, we need accurate timetable information, we need current timetable information, and we need complete information. Um, so 
as a part of that, as an example, we don't obviously want any expired dates to be provided. We want all of the data provided to be current. Um, and most importantly, at the bottom there, the correct real-time references. So if there's any references um, to things like vehicle journeys in, in the um, timetables, these, these should hopefully match what's being received in the Siri VM feeds. Um, so those are kind of the two really important things um, to note. If, if we're not receiving information from these two areas, then the analysis within the tool will not be complete for those operators. So if you see any kind of strangeness within the tool where there's no data available and you'd expect it to be, it's, it's likely to be one of these two things. Um, and if it's not, then we encourage you to get in touch with us and we can work out what's going on. Um, one kind of exception to what I said about the data only coming from the bus open data service is that until the end of June, as we sort of transition and get more complete data on bots, um, if there is no timetables data within the bus open data service, we will take this from the TNDS. Um, and that enables us to give some analysis to people to start with. Um, we will be stopping that um, towards the end of June. And at that point, if the operator's data isn't in a kind of fit state in the bus open data service, then the analysis within the tool for that operator will kind of drop off and no longer appear. Um, about the sort of service itself, this is a kind of phase project. So we make regular releases um, with, with kind of major milestones that you see here. Um, so back last year, we sort of put in the foundations for this service, set up the data warehouse and so on, um, and, and got in place the schedule and real-time matching methods. Um, in At the end of December, we released the feed monitoring and the alerting elements of the system. And then at the end of the March, we released the on-time performance um, features within the system. Um, and then over the summer, we're going to be working on the mapping and geography elements that currently aren't within the system. So that's what we're building at the moment. Um, and that will hopefully be available towards the end of September. Um, it's worth noting between um, now and September, and as we have been doing, there may be more regular releases. So there may be updates and improvements that we decide to make to the service between um, now and the end of September. Um, just wanted to talk a little bit about the user research that sort of went into building this service. Um, so. So far, we kind of conducted this in two phases in the summer of last year and then at the start of this year. Um, and we tried to get opinions and feedback and, and um, thoughts from across those four key user groups. Um, some of you may have been involved in that. Um, so we did 66 interview sessions and, and also testing sessions where we showed people um, what we were intending to build and, and got feedback on those wireframes. Um, and that included 19 local authorities, 17 bus operators, or DVSA representatives, and, and eight DFT representatives. Um, we had three PTA workshops with um, the three that you can see there. Um, and we did several knowledge sharing sessions. So we spoke to the geospatial committee, to the DFT traffic and technology, data science team, the DFT rail statistics team, just to kind of get a view and a feel for what other people were doing. Um, in the industry so far and get, get their feedback as well on what we're building. Um, and then we did a few kind of workshops where we did some process mapping and some strategy and policy workshops with, with um, the government organizations. Um, so that's the kind of research that we've put into this so far. And we may do some more kind of user research sessions as we progress. Um, the idea is that we do want to speak to, to as many people as we can to make sure that the service is, is helping um, everyone do, do what they need to do um, in, in their job to succeed. Um, so if we move on to the functionality that the tool provides, um, there's currently two main sections, as I mentioned before. There's the feed monitoring section and the on-time performance section. Um, we talk very quickly about feed monitoring. Um, the intention of this is to help monitor which feeds, and, and when we say feeds, we mean the um, vehicle location feeds provided to bots um, in real time, and those are kind of separated by national operator code. 
Um, it gives you a live view of what's currently happening with that feed and also a feed history. So you can kind of look across the last 90 days to see if there are any issues with the feed. Um, it generally gives an, an idea of the number of vehicles that we're expecting to see and, and the number that we're able to kind of match as, as we receive them into the service. Um, Obviously, if these numbers are poor or they're not matching at all, um, or we don't have that real-time feed, the resulting analysis that you see in the tool won't, won't be complete. Um, so we can only deal with the data that we're given. Um, and you're also able to set alerts to receive um, emails for errors. So if, if you have any kind of feed errors or any areas where that feed is kind of largely incomplete, we can set up alerts um, as that happens. To, so you can kind of jump on that or see it as a kind of systemic problem and improve it in the future. So that was the feed monitoring section. The on-time performance part of the tool, um, it enables you to view aggregated performance um, against on-time early and late metrics across the operators. Um, it lets you see line level performance for how the lines that belong to those operators are performing as well. And then it also allows you um, to see how the stops along that line have also been performing. Um, so when we talk about on time early and late um, in the tool, this is as per the kind of OTC definitions that you may be used to. So obviously on time is between one minute early and up to six minutes late, late is more than six minutes late and early is um, more than one minute early. Um, so they're the kind of definitions that we're working with. So it's standard and, and well understood um, by everyone looking at it. Um, it is also really important to note that there are more features to come to this area. So what you see there today isn't necessarily uh, all of the features that we intend to build. Um, there are more coming, they're under active development and research and so on. So they'll kind of be being dropped over time as, as we build them. Um, the last section of the tool um, that we intend to build in, in the medium term is the geographical analysis section. So this is also undergoing user research and development at the moment. Um, but the idea is we want to provide tools to all of the users to explore the data that we have geographically. Um, so what do we mean by that? We mean exploring the data on a map, essentially. So um, you can perhaps do things like monitor corridors. Um, you can do things like look for pinch points in the network and so on. Um, so that's the intention with that section. Um, and that will kind of evolve over time. And that's what we're aiming to release by the sort of autumn time. Um, importantly, how, how can you get access if you don't have access at the moment? Um, the kind of first thing to consider is the operators within your area must be providing timetable and AVL, AVL information to bots, because otherwise, if they're not, you won't see anything when you log in. Um, you need to request an invitation to access. Um, so if you email this email here, then um, you'll be able to um, get that invite sent to you. Um, when we send you an invite, um, it's got a 72 hour expiry on it. If it expires, let us know and we can kind of reset that and send you another one. Um, and I guess the question to ask yourselves when you look at the data is, are you seeing all of the data that you expect? Um, if you think that there are operators that you should have access to as a part of your local authority that you don't, um, please let us know, please email us and we will want to sort that out for you. Um, and if you have any feedback on the features within the service um, and if you haven't used the chat today to kind of talk about that, um, then we will send around a survey after this webinar to get your feedback on, on those things. Um, also, you can drop me an email at any time and, and I'll be happy to pick that up and, and have a chat with you about things. Um, so I'm quickly going to switch my screen to um, just give you a quick demo of the service so you, you can have some more context for what, what I've been talking about. Give me one second. Cool. So 
what we see here is what you see when you log in. So we provide you with a dashboard. Um, it's important to note that um, when we invite you to the tool, we set you up with um, a section of operators that um, are relevant to you. Um, and this dashboard is showing you information about all of those operators. Um, so very quickly, it can show you kind of an, an overview of the on-time performance um, for the last 28 days. Um, and you can also kind of change this to see just the last seven days or the month today um, or last month. So you can see how things have been changing over time. Um, you can see the top three performing lines in your data and then the bottom three performing lines. So quickly, you might um, want to pick out some of those um, in the bottom three and explore further uh, or help kind of congratulate those in the top three. Um, on the right of the screen, you can see some, some metrics about the feeds themselves that we're receiving in. Um, so this shows you the current number of vehicles that we can kind of we're receiving into the service and that we can match to the timetables. So the one on the left. Um, and then the one on the right is the expected number of vehicles looking at the um, timetables. What, what would we expect to receive? Um, and then we have a quick kind of preview of the feed statuses. So these are the, all of the individual real-time feeds of the operators that, that we have within our profile. And if there are any that currently either aren't working or aren't being provided to the service, you'll see a sort of red cross at the top. And that'll tell you that these um, feeds aren't providing data. And that may account for some of the differences that you're seeing up here in these numbers. Um, we can jump into the feed monitoring part of the service. So this gives us a bit more information um, about the feeds that are inactive. So if they've been unavailable, how long have they been unavailable? Um, if they've never been provided, you'll see a a view similar to the one at the top where it's 0% availability and kind of no, no information about when it was unavailable from. Um, so that kind of gives you a, a quick entry into things that you can um, do to improve the data that you see within the service. Um, and down below, you see all of the currently active feeds. So these are feeds that right now we're receiving um, real time data into the service for. Um, this gives you a quick view of the feed availability. So essentially how, how um, available has the feed been within the last 24 hours when we're expecting it to be? Um, what's the update frequency between the um, GPS coordinate pings that we're getting? Um, so generally this should be below 30 seconds and normally is. Um, operators are doing quite a good job of that. Um, and then when, when did the last outage occur? Um, so when was the last time we were expecting data from the feed but didn't get any? Um, quite often this, this might happen sort of uh, overnight or right at the start of the day when there are relatively few vehicles running. Um, and then that gives you a um, quick view of what the feed activity has looked like over the last 24 hours just to kind of check if, if it looks normal from a first glance. Um, you can then uh, jump into the detail of it a bit more so you, you can see a live view of what that feed is providing right now. So currently, how many vehicles are we able to receive and match to the timetables? Um, what are the vehicles that we expect? Um, so you can see if there's any differences there. What's the current update frequency of, of what we're receiving? Um, and you can see graphs of that over the last 20 minutes and over the last uh, 24 hours. Um, so this gives you a view of the expected vehicles that are running and the current vehicles. Um, it's important to note that this kind of hour by hour metric is for vehicle journeys. So you can see there that we expected 36 vehicle journeys and we only tracked 31 vehicle journeys. So these numbers on the left obviously are quite a bit higher than the ones on the right because they're for, for journeys. Um, if there were any recent alerts, so things like the feed being broken, um, the feed being like largely incomplete, so perhaps less than half of the data was available, um, we'll raise these into an event log and you can see if there's been any kind of problems with your feed. Um, and finally, um, well, there seems to be an error here, um, if you can think of that. Um, normally when it's working, we can show you a feed uh, history over the last 90 days. Um, so this will show you similar information to the previous page, but it will show you uh, that information over the last um, 90 days. And that will enable you to kind of check if you have any systemic issues um, that keep reoccurring in the feed. So obviously this looks fairly normal if you saw kind of complete dropouts during the day periods of time. Um, and that kind of consistently was happening over the last 90 days, you might want to investigate that a bit more.
Um, so that's the feed monitoring aspect. If I just jump back to the dashboard and then talk a bit more about the on-time performance. Um, so if we go into the on-time performance, you'll kind of by default get the first operator in your list. Um, if you jump to one that you're kind of interested in looking at, um, you can see how their performance has been over the last 28 days by default. Um, you can choose any time period that you want to um, by using this date picker. Um, and that will kind of give you a view of the data for the time range that you've chosen. Um, it's important to note if you choose a sort of short time period, so less than a week, we'll kind of show you an hourly breakdown of those on-time performance numbers rather than a daily breakdown. So that's why this graph looks a little bit more noisy. Um, you can add filters to this data. So if you only wanted to see data um, during the week um, or perhaps at rush hour, what your performance looked like during the week, um, you can set up some filters on the data to, to see what your performance looks like just um, accounting for that data. Um, and probably more importantly, if you just want to see what the performance was at timing points, you can click this button up here and that adjusts the um, analysis just to be for timing points only. Um, there's a couple of different graphs that we provide. Um, so we provide a distribution, essentially telling you for the number of departures, how early um, your departures have been and how late they've been. Um, performance across the time of the day. So this is data aggregated to the hour of the day. So from five in the morning here and here. Um, and the relative performance is so you relative performance where you can quickly see if there's a particular hour of the day where you have problems such as eight until nine at night in this case. Um, and then day of the week. Um, so for the days that you're running, um, what um, has what does your on-time performance look like? Again, that can kind of quickly point out if you have the days of the week where you're having issues. Um, get some summary figures below, um, and then you get a list of the services associated with that operator. Sorry, a list of the lines associated with that operator. Um, and here you can see um, obviously the summary performance um, for those lines. Um, Importantly, you can see the number of scheduled departures we have and the number of um, recorded departures that we are actually able to make in the system. So um, obviously we want this number, this percentage to be as high as possible um, to give you kind of complete analysis. Um, you can use this if you have lots of lines to search for the lines that you want to see. Um, and once you've kind of found the line you want to look in a bit more, um, you can click on that. And very similarly, you can um, see the same kind of graphs and functionalities that are filtered by date ranges or, or by timing points and so on. Um, but the main difference is below the graph, you're able to see the stop um, level breakdown. So for the filters you've selected, you can view the data at each stop um, and you can view um, stop by stop um, how well the service has been performing in terms of on time early and late um, and average delay. And this little um, symbol here will tell you which stops are the timing points um, within this service. Um, so that is currently the on-time performance section. Um, at some point soon, we want to also add a map to this page. So not only do you have a kind of list of stops um, that aren't particularly well ordered, we will be able to provide that order on the map. So um, you'll be able to kind of see geographically um, where this service operates and, and how it's um, performing across that um, geography that it's running in. Um, and that leads me on to the final section is this part of the service is, is obviously coming soon. We welcome any feedback that you have um, and that will help us build out the area of, this, the, area of the site here to be um, really relevant to you. Um, Final couple of bits, um, there's some account management functionality we've built so far. So you can see the users within your organization here. Um, if you want to invite any more yourself, um, you can do so. Um, and you can also set up notifications. So, so far we just have two notification types, but we'll um, add to these over time. Um, so as an example, you could set up a notification for a feed failure. So if vehicle data has been missing for more than 20 minutes, and then you can choose who you want to send that notification to and then click create notification and I'll set that up. Um, and every time that um, occurs within the system, you'll get pinged an email um, and able to, to jump on that and respond to it if you need to. Um, 
over time we'll probably add more notifications for things like um, poor on-time performance. So if, if on-time performance was very low um, for a particular service, then, then um, over time we'll add functionality for you to be able to subscribe to that um, via a notification. Um, I think that's everything I'll show you today. Obviously, within um, within the later webinars, we'll go into a bit more detail about these things um, and, and based on the feedback that we received today. Um, if I just jump back to um, the webinar and then we can go into any questions that we have. So we received a few questions um, in advance of the of this webinar and we'll try and I'll try best to answer these here. Um, so we had a question about how should consultants and agents working on behalf of either local authorities or operators use ABOD. Um, the kind of straight answer to that is right now we don't have any specific functionality for consultants and agents. Um, that doesn't mean that we're not looking into it. We are. We're, we're kind of interested to speak with consultants and agents and, and work out um, how we can design the service to kind of best suit the needs there um, and, and understand that a little bit more. Um, obviously, right now, any support that you, you want to give um, to local authorities and, and how they could use this service is also um, much appreciated. Um, the second question we received, and we received this uh, a couple of different times, but um, how can this service, or do we foresee the service helping with enhanced partnerships and bus service improvement plans? Um, the answer is yes, we do want this to help where it can with these things. Um, it may be that the functionality that's um, more relevant to this will build up over time. So there hopefully are some things in there now that could help and kind of give a basis and an understanding of how this tool could be used. But over time, specifically more with the kind of geography um, functionality, that may help a bit more with those things um, as we build it. Um, how accurate are the punctuality figures? It's a really important question. And, and the answer is that we can only really deal with the data that we're given. Um, so we really do need to be, be able to match that real time data to the timetables data. And we obviously need the data to be available. Um, and if it's not, then the, um, the data won't be very accurate. But if, if it is, and hopefully over time, there are some um, kind of programs within the main bus open data service that intends to help improve data quality, then, then as we improve that, we can see um, the accuracy of these figures come up over time. Um, how can disruptions be accounted for? Really interesting question here. Um, right now, um, but the bus open data service doesn't have access to the to any disruptions data. Um, so right now, as, as I mentioned, we can only deal with the data that we're given on the bus open data service. And uh, as we don't have that, we, we have, have no kind of accounting for disruptions here. But that doesn't mean over time we can we can not, we can always find a way to, to kind of look into this, explore it a bit further and see if we can build that functionality in over time. Um, is someone else's performance analysis based on arrivals or departures? It's, it's departures at the stop. Um, so that's that one. Um, and can you see your filter data by uh, timing points? So it shows you in the top right of the on-time performance section, you can click um, the timing points filter just to see all of the data by the timing points. Um, so that's the functionality that's there at the moment. Um, and that, that may evolve over time as we get more feedback on it. Um, so those are the sorts of questions we received on the questionnaire. So thanks for submitting those. So I'd like to kind of open up to any other questions. And I can see there's been a fair bit of activity. And so Amy, if you want to kind of throw any questions that haven't been answered to me. Yeah, thanks, Dan. As you say, there's been quite a bit of feedback on the um, chat function. And so just want to say thank you to everybody who has been posting questions and asking for um, logins to analyze bus open data. Um, for those of you who have asked for logins, um, we'll definitely sort those out for you. Um, and there'll be a survey that comes out after today's webinar, where if anybody hasn't already asked in the in the chat uh, function for access, um, you'll be able to let us know in the survey that comes after today's webinar. And so um, look out for that if you if you haven't yet asked for a login. Um, there have been a few questions that I think, Dan, would be worth us picking up. 
um, as a group and I've been trying to organise these into what is hopefully a sensible-ish order. Um, there was a question early on about analysed bus open data um, and whether it's intended to support the bus back better strategy um, and I think that the, the kind of um, broad answer to that is absolutely it is intended to support that and so there are analyses that we hope are available now that will will help with some of those efforts and there's also as Dan has mentioned um, additional uh, features that will come later on in the year that will strengthen this too. Um, one of those is the kind of mapping and geography based elements that Dan mentioned earlier on and there have been a few questions regarding that Dan um, and so I just wondered Dan whether you either want to talk a little bit about the geography based features that we have planned. Um, I don't know whether you want to, to share anything on the screen or, or just talk through that. I have mentioned on the chat function also that there is um, there are some extra webinars in June and July planned and the webinars in July specifically um, will talk in more detail about the geography based features. So if anybody um, is keen to, to know more about that later on in the year, then I definitely suggest signing up to those webinars. But yeah, for now, Dan, do you want to just talk a little bit about that being as there's a lot of interest in it? Yeah, no, it's it's really interesting. It's it's definitely something exciting that we're working on at the moment. So I haven't got anything to show you, but um, what I can say is there's kind of two main thoughts at the moment that we're pursuing. One of them is is whether we can kind of use the map to build up corridors that um, uh, people can save within the system and then view um, how that corridor is performing um, in in the area of the town that you selected over time. Um, so that's one um, potential um, avenue that we're exploring. The other one is whether we can just give you some some more freeform analysis on a map. So can you can you kind of see all of this data on the map at once and kind of scroll around at particular filters? So say um, I only want to see on time performance that's less than twenty percent and a delay that's more than ten minutes and kind of filter out um, to see only those areas on the map um, and and kind of look for places and areas within the geography that you're looking at that can be improved. So those are the two things we're exploring at the moment. It's currently under research and development, so um, I, I can't give a lot more detail than that. And, and obviously that, that may, may kind of change and evolve over time, but, but hopefully that gives a, a bit of a flavour for what we're looking at there. Thanks, Dan. Um, if anybody has any other questions about geography-based features, please feel free to post those in the chat function and as I say the the webinars in July will also go into those in more detail. Um, there have been some other questions about future features specifically Dan there is one question about is it possible to access the analysis data via an API and there's also um, a question about would it be possible to export information uh, including the graphs or maps um by csv or pdf do you want to to just talk a bit about apis and exports so i'll talk about the export first so this is um was a feature in the original designs and definitely something that everyone fed back would be great as if if the data could be exported um obviously via csv um initially is, is what our plan is um we just haven't got around to building that feature yet but it's it's on the road map to be built um at some point soon um, the other question about API access is, is the answer is no. Currently, there's there's no API to, to access this information. Um, so yeah, there there are avenues that are being explored within the main service as to whether we we want to make some of this information available or not. But um, I, I guess fundamentally, the answer is no. Right now, you can't pick this up over an API anyway. Thanks, Dan. Um, hopefully, that helps for those who had posted those questions. Um, there was also a question, and I wonder, Dan, if you might just want to um, go back to the, the demo of the service for, for this one. Um, can you interrogate historical data over six months or older? And in fact, as I say that, I, I know that we haven't got data that is six months or older in there, but th there's some stuff that we could possibly show to kind of show how you can go back in time. Yeah, um, let me just jump back to it one second um so 
as an example within here, um, we, we're storing all of the data um, essentially indefinitely as we receive it. Um, but if you if we did have data from kind of a very long time ago, you can just scroll back in in this date picker and essentially choose as long as the time period as you want um, historically. So say from the first of October last year to the end of January this year, um, we don't have data for that, so I can't show you, but essentially that would kind of get you into um, any history you want to see. Um, thank you, yourself. Thanks, Dan. Um, there have also been a couple of questions um, to do with disruptions, so it might just be worth going into um, the point about disruptions in a bit more detail. So the questions that we've had are, is there any form of alert if a bus is off route, for example, due to a temporary diversion for roadworks? And there was also another question asking how will operators be able to factor in disruptions such as long term or short term roadworks? Um, so I, I guess that's, that's really good feedback and currently um, the answer to those is, is no. So we don't currently give any kind of notifications for buses being off route um, and we're not able to show you where disruptions might have affected the data that you're seeing. Um, there are definitely kind of um, thoughts about how we could do this on the roadmap in the future. Um, so it's, it's not a definite no forever. It's just that currently we're not able to do those things. Thanks, Dan. Um, there were also a sorry. There was there was one specific suggestion, which was: um, Is it possible to expand the stop names to include the name of a uh, of the town or village? Um, not currently. It's definitely possible that we could develop that. So I'm just noting that feedback now. Thanks for that. Um, and then there were a couple of points to do with um, accuracy and data quality, um, one of which was how is it warranted, um, uh, the, the accuracy of the feeds, how, how is the accuracy of the feeds warranted? Um, I, I'm not sure I quite get the full context of the question. Um, yeah, so I forget now who exactly posted that question, but I think that my take on that is that um, it's the operator's responsibility to make their real-time data available and so operators need to do that on the bus open data service and it's their responsibility to make sure that they publish Siri feeds that um, account for all of their vehicles um, in their fleet. Um, beyond that, um, I guess that in terms of the accuracy of the feeds, um, once those feeds are published, they should be relatively accurate. Um, although I guess that there are, um, you know, some considerations to do with GPS accuracy, et cetera. And so there are some kind of intrinsic things within GPS feeds that could mean that there are slight inaccuracies. But generally speaking, once um, the feed is published on BODS, the real-time location data should be relatively accurate. Um, whoever posted that question, if that doesn't quite answer your question, then please let us know in the chat box. Um, if, if you've got any follow-up question. Um, there was also a bit of discussion on the chat function to do with um, motivation for operators to maintain their data accuracy and quality. And somebody um, pointed out that one of the motivators for them to do this may be um, that DVSA are using analyzed bus open data. Um, and I just wanted to um, just uh, confirm that that is the case and so DVSA is one of the user groups that will be using that is using and will be using analyzed bus open data to help them to monitor the performance of operators nationally and so um, it's it's going to be an important part of their toolkit to kind of proactively monitor um, the performance of services in the future and so um, yeah whoever made that point about the DBSA use of this being a motivator for operators to maintain their, their data quality and accuracy um, was, was spot on. Um, I think that that covers all of the main questions that I picked up from the chat. Um, 
there's one that has just come in to ask, is there a desire to show all buses on Analyze Bus Open Data at any one time on a map overlay, um, as in uh, a live view? Um, not currently, but um, as you've given that feedback, we can um, consider it, but, but not currently. Thanks, Dan. I think that that takes us through most of the questions. If anybody um, has got outstanding questions, please feel free to, to post them in the chat function now. Thanks, Dominic, for, for your messages and absolutely no problem with, with posting that website. We, we, um, we like that website ourselves and we, we don't see them as a competitor. Um, I think it complements this service really well. So thank you for, for posting that suggestion. Um, it looks like um, everybody's quite happy. Dan and Tim, we're not getting any other questions at the moment. So I'll hand back to you guys. Yeah, so just to wrap up, um, obviously request an invitation if you want access to that email. Um, we'll send around a questionnaire. Please please fill it in if you can. It really helps um, to get all the feedback that we can or simply email me. Um, we have webinars in June and July. Please sign up for those. Come to them. We'll go into more detail um, based on feedback that we've received. Um, keep an eye out for the features as we release them and um, feel free to engage with us. There, there are kind of um, Twitter handles and, and LinkedIn. Um, where we regularly post. Um, and the last one is that we have on the ETO World website, what we call the BODS Resource Center. So here's, here's where we're just kind of taking some of the data from the service and, and investigating it and analyzing it and doing some cool things with that. So if you want to go and have a look on our website, then there'll be some resources there for you as well. Um, so I think that's it. Thank you everyone for attending and thanks for all of your feedback and questions. It's been really helpful. Um, and thanks uh, Tim and, and Artic for hosting. Thank you, Dan. Um, please do uh, sign up for, uh, for for the future webinars. And um, uh, thank you, Dan, Amy, and Patrick for um, your um, work um, and uh, responding back to uh, to the comments. Um, this uh, recording will be made available. Um, in the next uh, day or so, so um, please uh, do look out for the email so you can um, play it back or pass it on to people that couldn't come to uh, this live. Um, and uh, finally, thank you all for um, joining us and um, taking part this afternoon um, and uh, see you again uh, soon. Thank you for watching this RTIG webinar. To find out more about RTIG and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you.